The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 17th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, but you still have a question, you can always send me an email. Now, that you send to Steve at tfnn.com. Send that early. And inside the subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. we got a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices are trading to the upside. Dow's up 431 points. That's one and a half percent. Two and a quarter percent for the S&P or 82 points. The NASDAQ, two and eight tenths percent, which is 300 points. Two and seven tenths for the Russell, 45 points. One and six tenths for the semis, up 35. The trend is up one and a half percent or 185. Gold's up 19 bucks. She's trading out at 1668. Silver's up 56 pennies. That's three percent to the upside or 1863. Lights Recruit is up 65. Cents. She's trading out at 86.26. Let's change that to the December contract here. Give me a moment to do that. But, uh, set it stay. It's up uh, again the same 67 cents. Trading out at 85.32. Natural gas. We're going to flip that over to the December contract as well. Give me a second here. That's off about uh, 50 cents, uh, 36 cents. That's what I should say. Trading out at 646. The 30 year treasury is flat at 123 and a quarter. Now, lead the charge dollar wise, the upside. You got Mercado Libre up 80 bucks, 10%. Big move there. Equinix up 21 bucks, 4%. Intuit up $19, nearly 5%. BlackRock is up nearly 19 bucks or 3.5%. To the downside, it is NGM Biopharmaceuticals off 8 bucks or 72%. Yikes. Minerva Neurosciences back eight bucks or 60%. Well, that's a stinger. And the rest of them are ETS. Regenerative pharmaceuticals are off about five bucks, six tenths of a percent to the uh, downside. So let's begin by taking a look at the. Um, mm -hmm. Here, let's do the play by play. Let me give you the chart that's most important for you to be paying attention to today, or at least, uh, well, at least for, the, for, for some of the day out here. And we're going to change panels. It's going to be our hourly charts, by the way, for our equity future contract out here. So when I uh, sent out the newsletter this morning, it's pretty early. At a uh, doctor appointment, hearing a doctor appointment uh, out there, my ears were clogged from a flight of still 30 days ago on the 17th, flying back from Nantucket. And so anyways, I still I have a little bit of uh, moisture or water in there, so we'll get that cleared up and that should be okay. But in any event, as I sent that out earlier this morning, what I had suggested to uh, – Subscribers is watch the 60 minute time frame charts because they're likely to form a TD9 count top by 10 o'clock. And in fact, that's exactly what took place out here. So you've got TD9 counts for each of the four equity future contracts, ESNQ, YM, and the Russell 2000. So those highs 
are the critical level. That if price closes above on a 30 minute, a 60 minute time frame, my apology, on a 60 minute time frame, that will tell you about price moving higher. Now, because we have a valid top out here and the oscillator and change lines have changed color, the exception being the Dow, which is strong, is the strongest of the four. Uh, still, nonetheless, what price and that oscillator and change line should do is test each other. Now, it could be a combination of price moving sideways while the line moves higher, price moving down, whatever that combination is. Right now, those lines are printing out at 36.48 for the ES, about 10. 10, uh, 9.29 for the NQ, 30.053 for the Dow, and the Russell at 17.17. But if price closes above the highs, and this is the key number to write down, so now you're looking at 36.96.25 for the ES Mini. A 60-minute close above that suggests that we head higher. For the NQ, the level to be watching is going to be 11, 117, even. Steven, for the Dow Equity Future Contract, that number is going to be 3361. And for the Russell 2000, it's TD9 count threshold level, 174570. You close above that, that suggests we head to higher ground. Now, higher ground says we've got to go look at other charts out there. So let's do that. Let's switch back and take a look at the daily time frame charts for each of the four equity future contracts. So give me a moment to do that. We'll go back to the black background screens out here momentarily we'll have the daily time frames up for each of the four equity future contracts the upper left hand side is the es mini so we can see right now that price is tested both on uh, friday thursday and now today both the top and bottom of the daily profile so we know that the profiles are doing the right thing which is identifying where buyers are located which is at 3650 uh, 3565 and sellers are hanging out at 3693 a close above 36.93, quite frankly, be too close above 36.93, would suggest we have a change in trend and at least get back to the most recent highs out there in the 3,800-ish level. And I would say that price would likely go run for its descending trend line. You can draw that on your screen as well. The NQ has more descending trend lines than the S&P 5 does, but, uh, the ES Mini does. But still, we, we take a look at the NQ. What it did on Friday was tested and rejected the bottom of its daily profile. That daily profile number is 10,733. That is held so far today. Price has not made its way up to the top of the profile like the ES Mini has, but it should be able to do that. Of course, it's got this TD9 count pattern that it's got to reconcile with. Now, a test and rejection of those levels, those green lines, wherever they format with price pulling back or however that works out, a test and rejection of a, a green oscillator and change line after this change colors would be a bullish signal. But price still has to clear those TD9 count tops. To the Dow, equity future contract, lower left out here. It has not been able to make it above the center of its bearish structured profile. That's where the sellers are hanging out, and that's between the zone of 3545 and 31256. If the Dow can close above 31256, it should be game on to the upside out there. That next upside in the 3332, I'll give you the number, 32789 ish type area. Because in the case of the Dow, that would take out its descending trend line. The Russell 2000 consolidating with inside its daily profile. You may notice only two lines out there, and that's because the bottom and the center is where both is, is where the buyers are hanging out. It's basically it's just buyers, period, because the center is at the same price level as the bottom of that daily profile, 1665.75. You close below that, which should be a very strong support level. That just says curtains and likely a larger A to B equals CD to the downside. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts as well as the 60-minute um, time frame charts. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. And, of course, if you're in our Tiger's Den, that's another way to reach me as well. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study. 
which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, dearest partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. back folks so the uh, what you're looking at on your screen right now is the 30 minute uh, tool that takes a look at the market breadth for the s p 500 the es mini as well as the uh, nq the ndx 100 and what i've got up right now is the ndx 100 <coughs> excuse me or the nq if you look in the very <laughs> upper left what you'll see is there are currently 19 instruments on a 30 minute basis trade above the top of that profile and 48 below the bottom <coughs> excuse me folks <clears throat> Get something in my throat here. And it doesn't want to budge. So that generates a bearish crossover. Remember, we're looking at the TD9 count top in the 60 minute. I noticed that the uh, 30 minutes also have a TD9 count. So they're suggesting a retracement and a pullback to at least their oscillator and change. And we'll take a look at that momentarily. Let me give you <clears throat> what the S&P 500 looks like at the moment. And again, this is a 30 minute time frame chart that we're looking at. And as this populates, what we're going to see out here is that there are 114 instruments trading above the top of their 30-minute profile versus 193 below the bottom. So we've got that bearish crossover on the 30-minute time frame, and that suggests a uh, retracement. That is logical. Now, what we're going to go take a look at before we go look at the uh, multi-time frame charts out here are the other four time frames that we have our market breadth for. And if we take a look, we've got bullishness. This is the NASDAQ 100 for the 6240 and daily. If we take a look at just exactly where they're at from a profile standpoint, what we'll see on an hourly basis is you've got 69 trading above the top of the profile, 12 below the bottom. So remember, we're taking a look at the 60-minute NQ chart. We were saying to get that oscillator and change line. You've got a TD9 count top. Price net line should test each other. So right now, that line is at 10,924. But you're looking for a test and rejection. As long as market breadth remains bullish out there, that test rejection would then be the catalyst to suggest that that would be the next buy point out there. But the 30-minute chart also happens to have a TD9 count. So which of the two are going to win the day? I don't know. If we take a look at the... Uh, 
that's the hourly time frame. The four-hour time frame, 52 instruments above, 12 below. Again, that's the NDX we're looking for. And on a daily time frame, which is uh, flipped back to a bullish, <coughs> just slightly, 20 above, 14 below. But if this can stay bullish and price in the NQ can close above the top of that daily profile, the 11.232 area out there, then that would suggest a further rally is likely. If we switch over and take a look at the market breadth for the S&P 500 instruments out here, you can see it's also bullish for the 60, the 240, and the daily. So it's just the weekly um, and that spot volatility being above its 50-day exponential moving average that are really the thorn in the side of any bullish run out there. Now back to the charts. Let's go take a look at the uh, multi time frame charts that we have out here for the NQ. You'll momentarily see that 30 minute time frame. That's gonna be at the uh, bottom of your screen, that second over from the uh, left. And in fact, I'll just simply expand it out and then that's all that we're taking a look at is a 30 minute time frame chart out here. So on a 30 minute basis, we can see you had a nice TD nine count top that formed at 10 o'clock bar following bar number nine, that threshold level uh, that price needs to clear is 11, 117, even Steven. So the same price point as the 60 minute time frame chart. But here, the oscillator and change line is at 10, 978. That's much higher. I say it's much higher. 10, 978 versus uh, about 10, 10, 925. So I don't know which of those two uh, it is that's going to work, but a close below 10, 978 would suggest getting back to the, uh, uh, the 60 minute. Oscillator and change on, but there is a new profile, 30 minute profile that's formed at 10,978. So that would be the area to be looking for the next potential buy point. And this is an intraday time period, of course. You still need price to close above that 11,117 number, I believe it was, which is the 10 o'clock high, uh, the bar that occurred during that 10 o'clock 30 minute uh, session out there. Um, let's see if there's anything else to really take a look at on these charts out here. Nothing else that I see. Uh, worthwhile at this stage. Now, let's assume that we just got a normal retracement back to an area of support, and then price takes off from there because we've got that market breadth, bullish market breadth of 6240 in the daily time frame. That's really the message that is provided to you and I. Then the area to be watching is going to be, now looking at the two-hour time frame chart, is going to be the 11.253.50 area. That's the TD9 count breakdown level for the NQ. So I think that's about all that we need to do to uh, take a look at the NQ charts. Let's do the same thing here for the ES Mini. Uh, let's give this a few moments here to populate. Again, the ES Mini daily, uh, 240 and the 60 minute time frames each have bullish crossovers. That means there's more instruments trading above the top of the resistance, the top of their profile versus trading below support, the bottom of the profile. And uh, that's what should uh, help to uh, lead as long as those conditions remain to a further rally. Now, the ES Mini charts here, they're just populating. My apology, they're taking just a tad longer. We do know that that 3694 area is a real key level. That's the top of the uh, ES Mini's daily profile out here. So everything is kind of coming to fruition right now. So the 30 minute time frame chart for the ES Mini also did form a TD9 count top. So that resistance level to be watching. Oh, wait a minute here. I take that back. The ES Mini did not. Uh, unlike the NQ, the ES Mini negated its TD9 count top immediately. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to pull back. The NQ, I believe, is the thing or the instrument that is driving things out here. So the ES Mini test rejection of about the 3661-ish area out there, that would be a bullish sign. And the only resistance that it really has is wave number seven. That was the high that came at 9 o'clock on Friday morning out there. So that level, by the way, is the 37.33.75 area. So we don't have the same pattern on a 30-minute chart for the ES that we do inside the NQ, but we do have the hourly ES mini TD9 count top, and 36.49 is basically its price target to the downside. To the upside, on a further rally, you'd be watching 37.33.75. That's the TD9 count breakdown level for the two hour time frame chart. Now, as long as we're here and we have no questions, let's look at the Dow. Let's go see what the Dow is signaling to both you and I. Uh, so let's just give this a moment here to populate. Dow equity futures right now on a daily time frame. Well, on any time frame, they're trading out at 3150. Remember, the uh, center of its uh, daily profile is up at the uh, 3545 level. Now, what you'll notice here is there's really a different set of profiles in the white background charts than the black background charts, and I use them both. 
And uh, but what we know about the black background charts is price has been unable to clear even get above 3545. So if price can do that, that's going to suggest a run up to the 31256 level. The top of the profiles are the same whether I'm using my black e signal charts or my white ninja trader charts out there. So we do know that sellers are lined up at the 31 256 area out there. The 30 minute time frame chart for the uh, Dow equity future contract did not produce a TD9 count top, just the uh, 60 minute. Now on a 60 minute basis out here, the Dow is a strong, uh, the strongest of the uh, four. Uh, we can see that price is already tested and so far at this stage here is rejected its green oscillator and change line. So it is already telling us um, that it wants to continue to move higher. In fact, the Dow's 30 minute equity future contract is pulled back to a level of support it's green asset and change line even though it didn't have that topping signal which is really being driven by the nq but the uh, dow is preparing is telling us it's preparing to move higher and again a close above that td9 count high that's the bar at 10 o'clock this morning for the 60 minute time frame 3361 will tell us that we should head to higher ground now that higher ground remember you got that 3545 level out there but you clear that and likely we're headed to 31256. Steve Rhodes from TFNN would love to hear from you. I did hear from Dan, and Dan wants to take a look at Dan the Man Levitan, B E R U. So let's do that for Dan when we get back to this break. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow up 514, the S and P's up 90, the uh, Nasdaq 100 is up 346. We got a caller on the line. It's John in Philly, so let's go out to John in Philly. John, thanks so much for calling. Hope you're doing well today. How was your weekend? It was very good and uh, glad. Uh oh, we got a breaking up, John. He must be on a fishing boat somewhere. 
that's a beautiful thing. Hey, John, can you hear me okay? Hmm. Okie dokie. So we're going to do this by mental telepathy out here. Oh, that didn't work out very well. KC. Uh, and if John, if you can't hear me, uh, just keep uh, keep talking. And But I know that what John is calling about uh, is I the... I am uh, here, Steve. Ah, good, good, good. Okay, I got you back. Perfect. So you're calling about the coffee contract, which has been uh, trading lower. It's back towards its July lows out here. Tell me what you're looking at and how I can best help you. Steve, I haven't talked to you about coffee futures for over a year. Steve, um, as you you uh, you and I know how one another trade uh, uh, quite intimately, uh, many of your listeners do not. So I'll just tell you is um, I'm always looking to find intermediate term bottoms and tops and then find an intermediate trend that starts to develop and speculate that way, speculate on a new trend. And clearly, uh, I miss many trends, and many times when I'm looking for a bottom and or a top, I'm wrong. Uh, and in those events, I just skip it and move on. Here yes. in the case of coffee, uh, Steve, um, you and I spoke lots in 2019 and 20 as I was probing for a bottom, uh, that market rallied dramatically in 2021, and I was riding that and trading that aggressively. And all of this year, I've done nothing with it uh, since um, uh, I had, in effect, milked the bull market in coffee, um, not knowing uh, if it would turn into a bear. So that's the history. Okay. Steve, I'm calling... I'm calling uh, about coffee today because, as you just pointed out, it has come down. It's coming down and pr uh, testing a prior low, and it ap happens to be a Fib 382 mark on the weekly charts. So I'm calling to ask if you can share with me what your TD9 counts, what your RMI indicators say, and anything else that might answer the question, could we see a bottom in this December coffee futures soon sure okay so thank you for all of that information that's perfect uh the first place that i'll start with uh, folks out here is really the small a to b equals cd pattern that is in place out here so this is the first pattern that i would be watching and i'm putting in the a to b equals cd the a point out here that i'm using folks is the high from august 25th the b point looks like it's the low from september 19th and that was a 66% uh, retracement up into the high end September 26. Price right now today is, uh, uh, or really on Friday, uh, crushed the one-to-one -one price projection level. So the next price projection area, that would be my 1.272 expansion of the C to D leg, would take us to about the 191.22 area. Now, what we're watching for here, folks, would be a bullish reversal candle. If we get a bullish reversal candle, that will confirm a buy the D point pattern. So that's the first thing I see on a daily time frame. I know you didn't ask for that specifically, John, but I certainly wanted to point that out. I know, I know that you knew about that. I wanted to simply point that out to all of the other viewers out here. So now let's go switch over to the white background screens. And the white background screen, what we're gonna see is that today is only bar number six for a TD9 count for its daily time frame out there. We do have on a five hour time frame chart, it does look like, and this, is, this current bar will close at, it says uh, 1.30. Yeah, so it's at 1.30, uh, what we should get out here, let me just make sure. My apologies, let me make sure. So you got to get below 195.65. What did we get down to on this bar? 190, oh, 195.80. So price has got to poke below 195.65 uh, between now and uh, 1.30, and then we'd have another five hours. So that would say in the evening session is on a five-hour time frame chart, you could, John, get a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. The 240-minute chart already has a TD9 count bottom, and that says if price closes below 195.65 for a four-hour time frame, that pattern would ne get negated. So that would then signal to you and I that uh, you'd revert back to the daily time frame, watching for the A to B equals CD pattern. I don't have any kind of a bottom signal for your two-hour time frame chart, nor the 60-minute a chart out here. If actually on the 60 minute chart, I take that back. There was a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. There still is a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That pattern would get negated with a close below 195.65. That's the same for the 30 minute time frame chart. So that's what I see when it comes to the TD9 counts or Rhodes momentum indicator signals out there, at least the ones that uh, would really 
make a difference to you. Um, not much else that I see out here. John, I know you're looking at the charts uh, that I've got posted here on the screen. Any questions that you have about these charts or anything else that maybe I shared with you earlier? No, uh, no, Steve, that is uh, very well just what I asked for. Um, a as I uh, mentioned, this 195-ish area yeah. on the weekly chart is a FIB 382 support mark. I have not taken a position. If I see evidence of basing, I'll likely be uh, probing uh, with buys. And if I uh, work myself into something along those lines and it starts to work, I'll be uh, following up to ask you um, uh, further guidance in the next days or weeks. But for right now, that has answered all my questions. I thank you. Perfect. John, thanks so much for calling. Always great to hear from you. That was John in Philly. And folks, I would love to hear from you as well. The number is 877-927-6648. Let me just check here real quickly, see if there were any emails that came in. I've got nothing by email, nothing, I believe, by uh, inside the Tiger Zeno. Let me just check here real quickly. Uh, yeah, nothing that I see. Uh, hi, Steve. What is your outlook for the QQQ? Thanks, Dennis. Okay, so we do have a question, so we're going to go answer that. So really, Dennis, the answer to so great question. Um, I'm just going to get these charts here to repopulate, but I'm going to switch over actually to my black background screen to um, to answer your question for you. So momentarily, we'll switch over to that, and we'll get out of this spot, this chart here, and we'll go right to the. I'm going to put up the daily equity future contracts again. So. And this is the area, this is what I'd be watching, Dennis, if I were you. are asking me what my outlook is. First, let me tell you what the market is doing. And that is with regard to the Qs or the NQs out here. Okay, we're looking at the future contract because that's really providing us with the best signals. Right now, we're in a consolidation. And that consolidation, John, is in between the bottom of the profile at 10, 733, and the top of the profile, which is 11, 231. Until either side of those breaks, closes above or below, we just have a sideways consolidation. That is the that's the that is the uh, message. It's clear as can be, and it's just as clear if you take a look at the ES mini. You can see the new profile that is now three days old. Price has found resistance at the top, has found support at the bottom, and so we got good old fashioned consolidation. Now, specifically on the NQ chart, and I'm going to expand this out here. What we can see here is that price is not closed above the top of a daily profile for two consecutive sessions. It has not done that since the trading day of uh, August the 15th. So let's say that there's going to be a rally. And the NQ takes out both its first descending trend line uh, out there, Dennis, as well as the top of its profile. And it could do it for two consecutive days, 11, 75. I believe if we get that, then the message that the NQ charts are telling us is that price should continue higher. We've got positive market breadth on a daily time frame. You don't on a weekly, so it could be a bit bumpy. But uh, watch 11, 231, 75 for the daily NQ. Two consecutive closes above that, and we have a change in trend. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're looking at ticker symbol VERU. This is for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, currently trading at 1172 and clearly another instrument that is uh, consolidating with inside its daily profile. And that's between uh, 1048 and uh, 1235. Now, at 1048, you'll notice there's only two lines here as well. So at 1048 is both the bottom and the center of its profile out there. So that's considered to be, oh, I take that back. Take that back. I don't think that. Give me a second here. Look at the white background chart. And make sure. No, I and the white background charts. 1048 is both support at the bottom of the profile as well as the center. So that's a real strong support level. Now, price above that red oscillator and change line, Dan, that signals to you and I that price should be able to make a move up to the 1235 level. Pricing close above 1235, two consecutive sessions. That would suggest that we move higher. Move higher to where? Well. The bottom of the weekly profile is 1260. So that certainly comes into play 1260. And if price can close above that, then you're looking at the next uh, battleground in the 1393 level. And above 1393, the battleground would be 1924. On a monthly time frame, price is pulled back. It's tested. It has rejected. It's green oscillator and change line. It is trading with inside its profile. So conditions are consolidating there too. But more on the bullish side with price being above its green oscillator and change line. But the weekly is below the green oscillator and change line and below profile out there. So I know what you're looking for, which is, uh, I, I believe you said it was a positive outcome from an FDA approval that uh, and I think you had some Friday. I don't. I apologize. I don't remember. Uh, maybe it wasn't a Friday and that's just coming from somewhere else. So I know you're waiting for a, a approval there. And, you know, what I don't have, which I could share with you, what I don't have is an actual bottom pattern. For the daily time frame, nor do I have a bottom pattern. I've got a top pattern, most certainly for the weekly time frame, but no bottom pattern for the uh, weekly time frame. So, if uh, if they get bad news, so the good news would say price is going to take us above 12.35, the top of the daily profile, up to 12.60, then to 13.93, and if price can close above 13.93, then it's off on its merry way up to the 19.24 area. So that's the that's the that would be the bullish case out here. What's the bearish case? I don't know if this is going to turn. I don't know if this will. But but if it does get bad uh, bad results out there, the whatever trial it is you're you're waiting upon, let's just go take a look at the uh, black background chart. Just simply because I can draw the A to B equals city. So we know that the uh, weekly chart has a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. That's what we took a look at. Uh, so now let's take a look at the potential. And I say just potential of an A to B equals CD to the downside. And in this case here, you know I hate doing this. When I say I hate doing this, what I mean is I hate having to use the same bar, which would be the week of September 5th, as both the B point and the C point. But that is really how it would have to be done. And that one-to-one -one would get you down to um, 
two dollars and seventy three cents, two seventy three. So that would be the worst possible outcome. Uh, you do have some support at five sixty six, but right now, as far as looking for some kind of signal, even if I take a look at a thirty minute time frame chart, and I'll pull that over here to this black background screen. Let's just see what kind of signal we have here on a thirty minute basis. What did this do? Not much. So I don't have anything really here, Dan, uh, to provide to you on a 30-minute basis. So we've just got to go back with the consolidation where buyers and sellers reside and uh, hope that you uh, get the outcome that you're looking for from your FDA chart out there. So uh, thanks for being patient. November 9th. November 9th is the advisory meeting out there. So, uh, hey, let's take a look at it on the 8th. I'm not sure what day is the 8th or the 9th, but whatever day it is that before that, where we're doing a live show, then uh, uh, let's uh, uh, let's uh, take a look at that. And, and you go on, what watch at that 1048 level. Between now and then, you know, price really shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't uh, uh, fall below that area. That's really the place to kind of load up, if you will, if you're trying to get your full position in. So, uh, Dan, thanks so much for the request. Hope that helps you out. We do have another request in here. That's from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look at ticker symbol GT. LS. So let's get that up on our screen out here. Let me see what screen do I have. Let's go to the white. Well, yeah, let's just stay in the black background. GTLS. So the question goes like this. Happy Marvelous Monday. Well, thank you. Same to you, Hector and Patty. GTS, the offset and chains on support and resistance on a weekly, please. Also, do you see an A to B equals CD to the upside? So now let's answer the A to B equals CD pattern out here. And so I think what Hector and Patty are looking at as a B point is the week of that began June 6, which had 1.6 million shares. Now was passed with 2 million shares the week of July 25th. So the answer is yes, there is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. The A point down here that I would be using is the low from January 24th, the week of, then the high of June, the uh, week of June the 6th, and then the low from the week of July the 11th. The one to one. A to B equals CD pattern, Hector and Patty, take it at 229.63. And if price can clear that, first it's got to clear the top of its profile, 214.14. But if it can clear 229, then you're looking at a move to the 252-ish area out there. Of course, you know the game plan. The game plan would be once you make it to the one-to-one -one area or very close to it, you look for a bearish reversal candle. If you get a bearish reversal candle, that would create a sell the D point, perhaps even turn into a, a uh, butterfly sell pattern. So that's the A to B equals CD. That was the weekly time frame that you asked for. Now let's go provide you the uh, oscillator and change line and the TD9 count values for the three different time frames that we have out here. You were specifically asking about the weekly time frame. And the oscillator and change line is currently printing just uh, below price, 192.97. Now a close above 192.97 should really lead us up toward, now this is a slightly it's a weekly profile that I'm looking at. I'm looking at the weekly profile. It is, I was very so slightly bearish, but uh, it's pretty evenly distributed. So price needs to close above not just the oscillator and change line, Hector and Patty, but a close above the center line at 200.31 on a, a weekly base. So you didn't have those charts up. Now they're up. Okay. So uh, uh, you can see on the weekly trade just above the oscillator and change line, 200.31. You didn't ask for the TAS market profile, but you did ask about resistance, and that most certainly is it. And above that, the next resistance would be the top of the TAS weekly profile, 214.14. On a daily time frame out here, what do we have? We've got a Rhodesmint indicator top. Don't know why price found support, why it did. When I say that, I mean I don't have a bullish reversal candle for a buy the D point pattern, but nonetheless that it did. So I'm not getting uh, pattern signals per se on a daily time frame. So but what I can share with you is that right now price has found resistance at its daily oscillator and change line. That's at 195.04, so presumably it closed above that would then lead to that move up to the 200.31 area and above 201, 200.31 to 1414. Um, if price were to close today below 190.41, that would be two consecutive days back inside the daily profile, Hector and Patty. And that would then be signaling to you and I that price may want to go test the bullish structured support area of its daily profile. And that would be between the range of 176.10 to 179.68. So I hope that helps you out with regard to GTLS. That is uh, Chart Industries, Inc. Again, trading out at 193.98. Thanks again for the request. No other requests that I've got here. We're going to go to a break in about uh, 15 seconds. So with that being the case, let's go back and take a look at those uh, NQ charts out here. 
Remember the Dow on a 30-minute basis already tested and rejected its oscillator and change line. Let's get a feel here for what the NQ has done, if anything, with regard to that pattern. Well, what it is doing, it is taking on the TD9 count top, the threshold resistance. Well, let's watch the 30-minute chart, which is going to close in about 10 minutes out there. And it close above 11, 117 would suggest we continue to head higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 11.54 in the morning on a uh, Monday at 11.27 a.m. We had the 30-minute uh, uh, TAS market breath move back to bullish, both for the uh, ES Mini and for the NQ. So now you've got bullish uh, bullish market breath for a 30, 60, 240, and daily time frame for both the ES and the NQ. What that should lead to is the NQ. Now, the next resistance level, by the, I noticed that there was a top of a new profile on a 30-minute basis that had formed out here. So I had given you, hey, if price closes above that TD9 count, well, we have to make a slight change. So price really needs to close above 11, 133.25 to have a clear path to higher price on a 30-minute time frame. Now, that clear path should then take us to 11, 231.75. Now, look, I expect that that is a, the likeliest outcome because of market breadth being bullish for those four time frames that we looked at. And price should be able to take out the 11, 231.75 level as long as market breadth remains bullish and positive out there. Um, the next battle, assuming that price is able to take out these levels that we look at, not the 11, 231, 
but on the intraday charts out there. Then we're looking at between 11,231.75 and 11,253.50. So that's where the spike would likely come. When I say a spike, a move higher above the top of that daily profile. And then a price can close above 11,253.50. That would be a really bullish outcome for the NQ. Let's see if we can populate the ES charts here before the uh, show is over. Uh, it should take just about uh, 10 seconds or so, I'm hoping. And we've got about uh, 30, 40 seconds perhaps left inside this uh, segment out there. But the ES Mini, as we speak, I'm just looking at my other screen out here. It is taking on the top of that profile, and that's at the 36.93 area. So close about 36.93. It's going to be a bullish outcome. Again, I'm waiting for the ES mini charts to uh, populate out here for the intraday time periods. Just taking a little bit longer than I had hoped for. But if you get a close about 36.93, you should head back to the 3,800-ish area out here. I'm looking for a TD9 count breakdown level to be watching. 37.33.75 to the upside. That is courtesy of the two-hour time frame. Folks, stay tuned. We've got some great programming all day long. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Please have a safe, magical, magnificent, marvelous Monday. Take care, folks.